And hello from Philadelphia, Frank here with yet another episode of UFO News Network Sunday, a special uh, uh, special Friday evening effort uh, going into early Saturday uh, because the UFO report dropped today. Uh, before I get into all that, a couple things, uh, our, uh, slow news week uh, for the most part, but uh, a couple key things did happen. Uh, the first uh, was uh, uh, another ambush interview from TMZ where uh, Marco Rubio commented on the forthcoming report and uh, let's uh, let's get the to Rubio's comments I'll get through this uh, preliminary stuff pretty quickly and we'll get to the uh, uh, the meat of the report such as it is but let's uh, let's get to this uh, uh, the comments from Marco Rubio uh, let's get to that right away let's go well, judging from uh, the report that came out, uh, yeah, let's uh, let's hope that it does leak. Uh, hang on a sec here. Let me get to the uh, uh, yeah. Let me uh, get to the right spot there. Yeah, uh, the, let's hope that it does leak because, uh, frankly, uh, the report was more than a little bit of a disappointment. Uh, the other bit of news that, that came out this week is the uh, identity of uh, the uh, UA, uh, UAP task force uh, uh, director. Uh, that is someone named uh, Brennan. McC Kernan. Uh, he's a, a Navy intelligence analyst. So uh, the report is his handiwork. Uh, uh, he was identified by Politico as uh, someone who uh, uh, was uh, the UAPTF director, and uh, he briefed uh, uh, Congress uh, not uh, this past week, but the week before. He was uh, one of the fellows uh, involved in uh, briefing uh, uh, the uh, the House uh, uh, committee uh, uh, that uh, uh, on intelligence. So uh, that he did that. So uh, we know that. Uh, this is his handiwork. Uh, he is responsible uh, for the report. And now uh, the report, it did come out. Uh, it finally came out uh, about, uh, uh, you know, what I was expecting. Uh, came out on Friday, uh, right on time. Uh, uh, it just uh, worked out uh, pretty well, I guess, uh, for uh, the uh, for uh, the folks that put together the report that the deadline happened to fall at sort of a, a fortuitous time after uh, Biden got back from his overseas trips to Europe and uh, before the holiday. So uh, it's out. It comes out on a Friday. Uh, again, uh, pretty fortuitous for them in terms of the timing. And it's out. And it's it is uh, frankly uh, it's a uh, it's a disappointment. Uh, uh, what uh, the Senate requested was a, uh, a public unclassified report uh, with a uh, classified annex, and uh, basically what we got was a uh, class uh, an unclassified public. Uh, abstract executive summary and uh, really uh, the uh, the key details uh, of the report are uh, going to are, are obviously classified and let's hope that uh, Rubio is in fact correct that the full report does leak uh, because uh, that's uh, really what we need to see uh, certainly a, a few uh, uh, interesting uh, interesting uh, revelations within the report but uh, not a whole lot so let's go through the report uh, page by page, and uh, what we've got, uh, obviously, the uh, it's a uh, preliminary assessment. So this is the uh, first uh, volley uh, back to the Senate. Uh, they asked for this report. Uh, they've got it, and it's uh, from the Office of the Director of National Intelligence. Preliminary assessment. So uh, it's a, a fine, uh, fine-looking cover page there, I must say. And uh, let's uh, uh, let's uh, keep going and uh, get to uh, page one on this. And uh, basically, uh, let's see here. Okay, uh, the preliminary report is provided uh, by the uh, uh, Office of the Director of National Intelligence, uh, provides an overview for policymakers of the challenges associated with characterizing the potential threat posed by UAP. Uh, the director uh, is the accountable official for ensuring uh, uh, the timely collection and consolidation of data on UAP. So uh, they're taking responsibility there. And uh, the uh, ODNI uh, 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 prepared this report for the Congressional Intelligence and Armed Services Committee. And uh, basically, uh, uh, that uh, that's uh, the scope of the report and the assumptions. Uh, uh, various forms of sensors that uh, register UAP generally operate correctly and capture enough real data to allow uh, initial assessments. But some UAP may be attributable to uh, sensor anomalies. And uh, let me go over to page two here. I got to jump back and forth because this print is way too small to read in the. Uh... 
in the software that you're getting to see. Uh, executive summary, uh, the uh, limited amount of high-quality reporting on unidentified aerial phenomena hampers our ability to draw firm conclusions. Uh, because the reporting lacked sufficient specificity, uh, ultimately recognized that a unique tailored reporting process was required. Uh, the UAP, uh, the, the task force concentrated its review on reports that occurred uh, from uh, 2004 to 2021. We had heard roughly 20 years, and that's about 17 years. That's close enough. Uh, in the uh, New York Times story that uh, provided a little bit of background uh, going in, uh, the numbers aren't exactly correct, but they're close enough. Uh, they went back to 2004. Uh, most of the UAP reported probably do represent physical objects, given that a majority of UAP uh, registered across across multiple sensors, including radar, infrared, electro-optical, weapon seekers, and visual observation. So, uh, you know, uh, uh, they're, uh, they're pointing that out. Uh, you know, they, they just seemed uh, uh, earlier on uh, saying that uh, there's an assumption that maybe the stuff isn't entirely working correctly on all these cases, but uh, uh, they, then they do uh, uh, say, hey, uh, multiple sensors. So, uh, uh, and hey, those multiple sensors represent the collection of physical evidence. Let's keep that in mind. It's physical evidence. Uh, in a limited number of incidents, UAPs uh, reportedly appeared to exhibit unusual flight characteristics. Uh, what does that mean exactly? <laughs> you know, unusual. Is that uh, supersonic speeds? Is that uh, instantaneous acceleration? Is that uh, right angle turns at high speeds? Uh, you know, uh, climbs that uh, are impossible for normal aircraft, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, you know, uh, anything. Uh, well, uh, let's put it this way. Uh, uh, to, to climb at a 45 degree angle, that's, uh, uh, that's uh, an, advanced, uh, an advanced aircraft for sure. And then uh, anything higher than that, uh, basically, uh, uh, you know, Know, it really raises some eyebrows. <clears throat> Uh, so, but uh, again, uh, uh, the forward facing, the, the public part of this report uh, doesn't uh, discuss uh, anything as far as the uh, specificity of uh, the, these flight characteristics. So again, that's something that, uh, you know, you would think uh, should be in a public report. Uh, no reason not to include it, uh, but it's not included. So these observations could be the result of sensor errors, spoofing, uh, observer uh, misperceptions, and require additional uh, rigorous analysis. So uh, the unusual flight characteristics, uh, th that, that seems to be where the potentially uh, uh, U uh, ET UFOs uh, are going. That's, uh, that's the bag that they're going to be in. But uh, again, uh, they're not, uh, you know, just uh, uh, not a lot of specifics there. There are probably uh, multiple types of UAPs requiring different explanations based on the range of appearances and behaviors described in the available reporting. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, not all of these are going to have otherworldly flight characteristics. Uh, uh, some of them uh, are, are, you know, they, they are likely uh, uh, foreign uh, reconnaissance, uh, advanced drones, and even advanced balloons, that type of thing, uh, to gather data for our adversaries like Russia, uh, perhaps like China. But uh, our uh, analysis of the data supports the construct that if and when individual UAP incidents are resolved, they will fall into one of five potential explanatory categories. Airborne clutter, not, uh, I'm not really sure airborne clutter. I'm not really sure what they're talking about there. Uh, natural atmospheric phenomenon, uh, you know, when you've got a, a, a sensor and a visual uh, target, yeah, I'm not sure how uh, many of those will be uh, explained by natural atmospheric phenomenon. You know, maybe one, maybe the other, but both, eh, I'm not so sure about that. Uh, USG or U.S. industry, uh, uh, industry developmental programs. Uh, we've been hearing uh, uh, that uh, the uh, the report is going to rule out any of our own potential gear. Uh, that is apparently not the case. Uh, that hasn't been done here. Uh, foreign adversary systems, of course, that's a possibility. And uh, uh, then the uh, the other bin. Uh, so uh, they're, they're calling these bins and not bags. Okay, so uh, a little discrepancy there. Others, uh, they are others. So and that's uh, that's where our uh, ET uh, uh, is uh, likely to be found. Uh, the UAP uh, clearly closed 
clo- uh, pose a uh, flight safety issue. And uh, yeah, that uh, that sort of goes without saying. It's understood. Uh, they're uh, f- in terms of flight safety, uh, uh, civilian or military, they're fanatics about it. And of course, uh, what also uh, falls into the category of uh, uh, potential flight safety issues, things like birds, uh, things like weather, that type of thing. So uh, this is uh, not uh, something that uh, uh, too many uh, pilots and certainly no American citizens should be uh, losing any sleep over, but uh, it, uh, it it it's in there, so uh, it is brought up. The safety concerns primarily center on aviators contending with an inc- uh, increasingly uh, cluttered air domain. A UAP would also represent a national security challenge if they're foreign adversaries. Uh, okay, a consistent consolidation of reports from across the federal government, standardizing reports, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the, the, they're talking about the importance of that. Well, you know, I mean, honestly, they've had 40 years to get this sort of thing done. And uh, this is where we are with that right now. So uh, some statements of the obvious, uh, some interesting uh, allusions to uh, uh, unusual flight characteristics. Not a whole lot more than that, uh, uh, at least up to page two. On page three, uh, we start to get into some numbers here. Available reporting uh, largely inconclusive. Limited data leaves most UAP unexplained. So uh, limited data and inconsistency in reporting are key challenges. Uh, Well, I can understand uh, there's some inconsistency in uh, uh, the reporting and uh, limited data. Well, you know, honestly, uh, the uh, the. I'm not uh, so sure that uh, there there's all all that uh, a larger number of uh, ET UFOs that uh, the number is probably uh, not all that small or not all that large. But uh, what you do is you have a larger pile when you go back over time. It uh, builds up over time. Uh, how many uh, how many of these cases uh, are uh, really uh, ET UFOs? Uh, you know who knows uh, one a month, uh, maybe two a month. Uh, can't say for sure. We don't know uh, because uh, what uh, limited data data they have, they're not sharing. So uh, there's no way for us to uh, determine that. Uh, you know, all I can say is, uh, yeah, it's got to be uh, uh, somewhere between uh, on the uh, the bottom end enough for uh, them to start paying attention. And on the top end, uh, it can't, uh, not enough for them to have uh, uh, really made a, a high priority of this uh, uh, going uh, from way back when. So uh, the Air Force uh, subsequent, let's see, uh, Navy, uh, let's see, uh, no uh, standardized reporting mechanism existed until the the Navy established one in uh, March 2019, and that uh, that is technically true. Uh, a lot of times, uh, what you would have with uh, uh, unusual cases, uh, uh, they're, they're people would uh, just uh, uh, file uh, Op Rep 3 reports. Uh, we've talked about that at some length. Uh, 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 Kevin Day uh, uh, from uh, the Nimitz case said he was at least considering uh, filing an Op Rep 3 report, never did. Uh, some uh, sometimes uh, uh, these uh, Op Rep 3 reports have been foiled out. Uh, Paul Dean is uh, uh, known for doing that kind of thing, uh, and uh, he's fa- he's uh, developed uh, some uh, interesting cases as a result of uh, uh, looking at Op Rep 3 reports. But again, uh, not standardized, so uh, that uh, that is uh, uh, correct. Although you know the reports do still get filed. Uh, the Air Force subsequently adopted uh, uh, a mechanism in uh, November 2020, but it remains limited to uh, U.S. government reporting. I'm not sure exactly what that means. Uh, Okay, so they... I'm not sure what that means, actually. It's a little vague. The language is a little vague there. Uh, and uh, uh, the uh, the task force regularly heard anecdotally uh, during its research about other observations that occurred, but which were never captured in formal or informal uh, reporting by those observers. So, yeah, I'm sure that's the case uh, as well, that uh, people just, yeah, just didn't file a report. Uh, they saw something, they uh, uh, captured something on uh, uh, some uh, remote sensing gear that uh, they were uh, monitoring, and uh, they just never filed a report. After carefully Considering this information, uh, the task force focused uh, on reports that involved UAP largely witnessed firsthand by military aviators and that were collected from systems we considered to be reliable. These reports uh, describe incidents that occurred between 04 and 21, with the majority coming in the last two years uh, as the new reporting mechanism became better known uh, to the aviation community. We were able to identify one report uh, uh, reported UAP with high confidence, and that 
that case, uh, we identified the object as a large deflating, uh, deflating balloon. Uh, the others remain unexplained. So we've got 144 cases, and uh, most of them within the last two years. Uh, 144 of them uh, originated with uh, government sources. Of these, 80 reports involved observation with multiple sensors. Uh, most reports described uh, UAP as objects that interrupted pre-planned training or other military activity. And then uh, the collection challenged uh, socio-cultural stigmas and uh, sensor limitations remain obstacles in collecting data on UAP. Uh, well, I can understand the first. I'm not sure what the, the sensor limitations. I mean, hey, if uh, you capture it, you capture it. If you don't, you don't. Uh, then you've got the sensor information. So, you know, well, what uh, what uh, what are they asking for here? Uh, you know, uh, sensors that... Uh, uh, can do uh, a lot more than the current centers that they've already spent uh, a ton of money on. Although some uh, technical challenges such as uh, how to appropriately filter out radar clutter to uh, ensure uh, safety of flight for military and civilian traffic, uh, uh, civilian aircraft are uh, longstanding as the aviation community, uh, while others are unique to uh, UAP problem set. Uh, narratives from aviators in the operational community uh, describe a disparagement. Uh, okay, sensors uh, mounted on uh, military platforms are typically designed to fulfill specific missions. As a result, those sensors are not generally suited for identifying UAP. Well, uh, I think the key is really that uh, you are identifying that something is there, uh, that uh, that's a, an intelligently controlled vehicle, and that it's flying. And you know, it'd be nice to uh, be able to identify the uh, the ET spaceship as uh, coming from uh, Alpha Centauri or uh, the the Sagittarius system or something like that. But uh, you know, the, the fact that you're getting it uh, on sensor data and maybe uh, also at the same time uh, having somebody see something that in and of itself is significant. Okay, and uh, yeah, you might not be able to specifically identify those, but uh, it's certainly worth cataloging them. Uh, and uh, then sensor vantage point and the number of sensors concurrently observing an object play substantial roles as a, a, in a distinguishing UAP from known objects and determining whether a UAP demonstrates a breakthrough capabilities. Optical sensors have the benefit of providing some insight into relative size, shape, and structure, and also flight characteristics. If you can figure out the size, the shape, and the structure of something, uh, you can figure out uh, how fast it's going and... Uh, uh, you know, what its rate of climb is and things like that. Uh, okay, and uh, uh, radio frequency sensors uh, provide uh, more accuracy, uh, uh, more accurate velocity and range information. So, okay, so there's that. Let's uh, go on to the next page here. Some potential patterns do emerge, although there was a wide variability in the reports and the data set is currently uh, too limited to allow for detailed trends or pattern analysis. Uh, there was some uh, uh, clustering of UAP observations uh, regarding uh, shape, size, and uh, particularly propulsion. UAP sightings also tended to cluster around U.S. training and testing grounds, but we assess that uh, this may result from a collection bias as a result of focused attention, greater number of uh, uh, latest generation sensors operating in these areas and uh, so on and so forth. Uh, uh, basically, uh, they're saying there's a collection bias uh, uh, because, uh, you know, that's where we have our sensors. Well, yeah, obviously. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, I, don't, I don't know what to say about that. That's sort of, uh, <laughs> you know... Uh... Yeah, yeah, uh, you're, you're going to collect sensor data where you have sensors. Uh, that seems to be what it's saying, and uh, there may be a, a bias in that if uh, uh, you want to study uh, uh, UFOs uh, where you don't have sensors. Okay, um, uh, that, that, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. If it does to you, uh, let me know. Uh, in 18 incidents uh, uh, described in 11 reports, observers reported unusual UAP pattern movements or movement patterns or flight characteristics. Some UAP appeared to remain stationary in winds aloft, 
move against the wind, uh, maneuver abruptly, or uh, move at considerable speed without uh, uh, discernible means of propulsion. In a small number of cases, military aircraft systems processed radio frequency energy uh, associated with UAP sightings. Uh, UA, uh, task Force holds a small am amount of data uh, that appear to show UAP de uh, de demonstrating acceleration or degree of signature management. Uh, by that, I would assume, and again, it doesn't say, I mean, uh, it's a public-facing report about some basic stuff here, and it should say it. I shouldn't have to guess what this stuff means. Demonstrating acceleration or a degree of signature management, does that mean that it accelerates uh, and uh, breaks the sound barrier but doesn't leave a sonic boom? It, it sounds like uh, that's what that means, but it doesn't say it. I mean, you know, the, the, a lot of this is uh, uh, very dissatisfactory. Uh, uh, additional you know, you know, this is this is supposedly a report. It should clear this stuff up, not raise more questions. Like, what do you, what are you even talking about here? Uh, additional rigorous analysis was necessary uh, by multiple teams or groups of technical experts to determine the nature and validity of these data. Uh, we are conducting further analysis to determine to determine if breakthrough technologies were demonstrated. So yeah, that's what I think they're talking about there, and uh, they can't figure out how something could be hovering and then <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, hitting, you know, maybe Mach 2 uh, in a very short order and not leaving sonic booms behind. So apparently there are cases like that, but again, it's not clear. It seems pretty simple and straightforward that you should be able to say it, but they're not saying it. Uh, uh, UAP uh, documented in this limited data set demonstrated an array of uh, aerial behaviors, reinforcing the possibility there are multiple types of UAP uh, requiring different explanations. Well, sure, you know, uh, some of them are uh, the recon types. I'm sure of that. The, uh, uh, the, uh, the Earth-made uh, uh, reconnaissance drones and balloons, and some of them are ET. Uh, so our analysis of the data supports the construct that if and when individual UAP incidents are resolved, they will fall into one of five uh, categories. And uh, we already uh, we already went through all that. And uh, this goes into more detail about them. So this is just uh, basically a reiteration of uh, uh, what was uh, already outlined earlier. So again, uh, they're repeating themselves, which is uh, always good. And let's go to this page. The other, of course, uh, uh, although most of the UIP described in our data set probably remain unidentified due to limited data or challenges in collecting data, uh, we may require additional scientific knowledge to, select, uh, to successfully collect on, analyze, and characterize some of them. Uh, we would group such objects in this category pending uh, scientific advances that allowed us to better understand them. Uh, the uh, task force intends to focus additional analysis on the small number of cases when a UAP dis uh, appeared to display unusual flight characteristics or signature management. So uh, that uh, that's what we're talking about here. The you know the the high speeds, uh, the 90 degree turns at high speeds, uh, yeah, the, the quick acceleration, that type of thing. I think those are those are the ET UFOs that uh, that we're really interested in. Okay, uh, UAP uh, threatened flight safety and possibly national security. Yeah, I certainly don't argue about that. Uh, and uh, the recon type of uh, UFOs, well, yeah, they might uh, uh, might be a national security risk. But the ETs, uh, you know, the, that's uh, they're, they're not, they don't, they don't, uh, they're, they're not a threat to us. Uh, ongoing uh, airspace concerns, UAP uh, TF has 11 reports of uh, uh, documented instances in which pilots reported near misses with UAP. Uh, that, uh, that, 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 I'd like to know more about those kind of cases. So I'm not sure, uh, uh, not sure uh, what those are. Uh, Maybe not UFOs. I think uh, uh, the ET UFOs probably uh, uh, keep a keep a good distance. Uh, those aren't uh, U ET UFO cases, I don't think. But uh, hey, I'd like to know more. But uh, you know that uh, uh, those uh, details are apparently in the classified annex. And then uh, potential uh, national security challenges. Uh, we continue to monitor for evidence of such programs, uh, given the counterintelligence challenge they would pose, uh, particularly uh, uh, UAP. UAP have been detected near military facilities or by uh, uh, or by aircraft carrying USG's uh, uh, most sensitive uh, sensor systems. Well, okay, so we got that. And then explaining uh, UAP will require analytic 
collection and resource investment. So here's the part where they ask for the money. <laughs> basically, uh, in line with the provisions of the Senate report accompanying uh, this and that and the other thing, a broader swath of uh, uh, USG uh, personnel and technical systems uh, uh, should be uh, in the analysis uh, and uh, the UAP TF's ability to employ that uh, anal uh, employed data analytics to detect trends uh, will also improve. And that's uh, that's basically yeah that we uh, that we need uh, we need more money. That's basically what they're asking for there. Let me get to the last page here. Uh, basically, this is a more. We need more money. We need more resources, uh, and uh, we're uh, we're limited. Uh, hang on a sec. Let me get you to that last page. There it is for you, and uh, I've got it in front for me, so I can read a little better and uh, expand uh, uh, the collection of uh, data. And uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, uh, here's one uh, interesting thing here uh, that uh, they're uh, also is currently working to acquire additional reporting, including from the U.S. Air Force. <laughs> like uh, they didn't get anything out of the Air Force, basically. That's what they're saying here. And uh, has begun receiving data from the FAA. So, you know, here's this uh, big six month report uh, uh, requisition by uh, the Senate, the Senate Intelligence Committee. And it looks like the Air Force didn't do anything. And it looks like uh, the FAA. Uh, is uh, is uh, going to cooperate, so uh, so that's good. Uh, so we we're we're, go we're going to get something uh, in the future, and uh, that uh, that is basically it. Just uh, 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 continued investment. We need more money. Uh, we don't have anything for you right now, really. Uh, uh, we don't know what it is. Uh, we look at all these cases. We don't know what they are. We spend trillions of dollars on defense. Uh, we have all this advanced sensors. We've got the uh, the best pilots in the world, and uh, you know uh, we. Uh, we don't have anything for you, basically. We don't have anything concrete. We don't have anything solid. That's basically what they're saying here. So uh, that's it. That's your that's your 180-day uh, uh, UFO uh, task force report. That's basically it in summation. You can read the whole thing yourself. And uh, if you see something that I didn't, well, uh, you know, but uh, I, I, I do note that uh, uh, there's not a lot of detail in there. It's uh, not a report. It's really uh, more of a, a summary. And uh, I was, uh, I was frankly, I was expecting more. But it is, uh, they do say it's preliminary. It's going to go back to the Senate. And obviously, uh, uh, there's not much in the uh, the, the forward-facing uh, report itself, uh, and we'll see what's in the uh, the classified annex. But uh, I think uh, we'll just get more details of uh, uh, we uh, don't know what this stuff is, and it could be a few different things, and uh, we need more money. Uh, basically, uh, that's what I think we're we're seeing here, and uh, that is unfortunate. It's uh, it's clearly going to be a longer, tougher fight to get information about specific cases that might be ET UFOs. That's, uh, that's what I'm seeing here. But uh, the good news is uh, that uh, people seem to be in, uh, the people seem to be up for the fight. And uh, this, uh, this doesn't seem like it's going to go away anytime soon. So uh, that's good. And uh, later on in the day, the uh, Under Secretary of Defense, who uh, oversees the UAP task force, uh, and uh, also, uh, just uh, by way of coincidence, also sees the Special Access Project uh, or a Special Access Program Committee, uh, Kathleen Hicks, uh, issued a uh, declaration herself. And finally, uh, late in the afternoon after the task force report was released, such as it was, uh, Kathleen Hicks, the Undersecretary of Defense, uh, released uh, this memorandum and... Uh, Going back, uh, it's good to see her getting involved because uh, we actually talked about her background, uh, that of uh, Avril Haines and uh, uh, Lloyd Austin, uh, the Secretary of Defense, uh, Avril Haines, the uh, uh, Director of National Intelligence. But uh, we talked uh, a little bit about uh, Kathleen Hicks's background, and it is a little bit interesting. Uh, she uh, does have a physics degree, so uh, she uh, should be uh, pretty familiar with, uh, uh, you know, uh, the uh, the value of uh, uh, remote sensing data, and uh, also has uh, an interest in aviation. Uh, she did take some pilot lessons at, at one point in her life, so uh, she has an interesting background. And uh, she might uh, uh, she might uh, prove to be uh, going forward a, a good ally for us, uh, looking at this UFO stuff. But uh, basically. Uh, 
she uh, uh, issued this memorandum that she's uh, directing the Office of the Undersecretary of Defense for Intelligence and Security to develop a plan to formalize the uh, uh, mission currently performed by the task force, uh, to establish a set of procedures to synchronize collection, uh, reporting, and analysis of uh, data on the you know the, the problem set, the data, whatever they want to call it, to establish recommendations for securing uh, uh, military test and training ranges, uh, identify requirements for the establishment and operation of the new activity to include organizational alignment, resources, staffing uh, required, so on and so forth. Develop in coordination with the principal staff assistants, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, the secretaries of the military departments, and the commander of the com- commanders of the combatant commands, and uh, with the DNI and other uh, uh, relevant uh, interagency partners. All members of the department will utilize these processes to ensure that the uh, task force or or uh, uh, its uh, follow-on activity uh, has reports of UAP observations within two weeks of an occurrence. So uh, that is a, that is actually uh, the best bit of news that came out of today, actually. It uh, wasn't the report itself. It's this new memorandum from Kathleen Hicks. So we will see. Uh, we are in a long, tough fight. Uh, we uh, found that the uh, Air Force is uh, uh, not being especially cooperative. We'll see where that leads. Uh, uh, we know that the Air Force has been involved. Uh, we know that that uh, uh, that uh, uh, the Air Force uh, stonewalled the ATIP program with investigators uh, uh, from uh, that uh, program uh, looked to uh, interview pilots who had chased a UFO over Texas during the Stephenville case uh, back in 2008, and uh, they had signed non-disclosure agreements and uh, weren't allowed to talk. And I uh, don't think that uh, that uh, uh, Stephenville case is uh, one of the uh, cases that are involved in the uh, the classified annex of the uh, uh, task force report. Uh, my guess is uh, uh, that's not in there at all. And also, uh, we uh, got a first-person account from uh, P.J. Hughes, who was on the Nimitz. Uh, uh, we got that right here uh, during uh, one of our shows about the Nimitz case. He was on and uh, talked about uh, how uh, an Air Force officer uh, was on the, the Nimitz collecting uh, the uh, sensing data from the E-2 Hawkeye uh, spy plane, that, or radar plane, I should say, uh, that uh, had uh, captured uh, data of the uh, the Tic Tac UFO uh, during that that famous incident. So uh, this uh, this uh, Kathleen Hicks, she could be uh, our best ally in all this. Uh, you never know. It uh, could be uh, could be interesting. Uh, uh, largely, again, uh, the uh, the report. Uh, I, I've got to call it. Yeah, it, it's not a report, really. Uh, what it is is uh, uh, what I thought it wouldn't be. Uh, it was a, an abstract uh, to a report, basically a, a public abstract to a classified report. That's where the the meat is. Uh, hopefully, uh, as uh, Marco Rubio <laughs> suggests, uh, that re- uh, the full report does leak, so we have a, a better idea of what we're talking about. But that's what we've got for now. Uh, not sure uh, when, <laughs> what the. Uh, I guess I uh, will be picking up reactions uh, throughout the coming week uh, to the report. It will be interesting. But we did see one reaction. It's a key one. It's uh, one that we really like. And it's good to, to end on a high note. But uh, again, what we're seeing is, well, going forward, we're going to be tracking this stuff very carefully uh, when we know uh, that uh, a lot of this stuff is, uh, has been tracked all along. So uh, what are you going to do? It's a part of the fight for the truth. Uh, it's not going to be an easy one. Uh, we're not done yet. And we're certainly not done here, although I am hoping I'm going to be able to take next holiday weekend off. But you never know. Uh, there might be enough uh, uh, for me to talk about. And if I do, I'm probably going to try to get it done uh, uh, early and uh, not wait until Sunday so I can uh, uh, get my full uh, three-day holiday weekend uh, uh, celebrated properly and uh, not have to uh, worry about doing this. But I uh, hope you enjoyed the show, everybody. Uh, went through everything. Uh, by all means, uh, read that uh, task force report uh, uh, for yourself. It's uh, readily available. And uh, uh, go through it. Uh, maybe you see some things in it that I didn't see. Maybe I'm uh, misinterpreting a few things. Uh, uh, I don't know. But uh, that's what I see. Uh, and uh, again, uh, it was, uh, it's been an interesting day, to say the least. But uh, obviously, I was expecting a lot more from the report. But uh, maybe we got a little bit of a consolation prize at the end of the day uh, with... Uh, 
uh, uh, the uh, Undersecretary of Defense's Hicks's uh, memorandum uh, related to the report. Although, again, hey, she's been in office almost half a year now. They've known uh, uh, all this was coming. It's like, uh, why do you wait till the why do you wait till the last minute? I mean, what do these people think they are? Me? You know, they should be on top of these things. After all, you know, it's our uh, it, uh, it's our uh, our national defense, you know, is at stake here. But uh, we're getting a little bit closer. Uh, we learned a little bit more today and uh, we learned that the, the Air Force uh, wasn't cooperative, that the task force wants more money and uh, they, they don't have enough data. And to be honest about it, I'm not sure uh, how much data there really is. That uh, Over time, it builds up. But, uh, you know, from day to day, week to week, month to month, probably not that much data on the, the uh, ET UFOs. But uh, over a period of time, it builds up. And of course, uh, again, no mention that uh, uh, these types of uh, these types of cases, uh, they don't go back to 2004. The UFO phenomena didn't start in 2004. Uh, as far as, uh, you know, as f- uh uh, as far as uh, uh, the historical record goes, at least in terms of a- aviation, it goes back at least to World War II and then obviously picked up uh, uh, back in uh, 1947. And uh, uh, we've got uh, those kind of cases with radar, with pilot uh, uh, sightings and uh, so on and so forth uh, going back uh, that far. So uh, uh, those cases aren't even mentioned. And uh, I wonder uh, I wonder if uh, uh, well, you wonder uh, what they're thinking about this. Uh, so uh, uh, all right. Well, you have a good weekend, and uh, I'm uh, I'm about out of time here. So uh, have a good weekend, and uh, we'll talk to you again uh, as soon as I've got something to say. Have a good one. Bye bye now.